What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo here, and welcome back for part 3 of my how to make a multiplayer first person shooter in Unreal Engine 5 tutorial series. Now before we get started, please do hit like and subscribe if you haven't already, and if you are so inclined, please consider making a small donation to the channel via the YouTube super thanks function. It goes a long way to keeping me going. And on that note, I have been on a brief hiatus. I've had some life admin stuff going on, um, but I thought I'd come back and just make a very brief installation of the series where we are going to uh, play around with the metahuman's hands and start working on sort of animating them and orientating them. Uh, correctly in front of the camera. So without further ado guys, let's get started. Alrighty guys, now very quickly before we get into uh, playing around with the hands and animating, I want to just download a free weapons pack, which we will use in future sessions to set up our weapon system. So head on over to the Unreal Marketplace. And the asset you're gonna be looking for is this one, Military Weapons Dark. Uh, this should be free, but I have heard that this is not free everywhere. For example, I've heard this is not free in Australia, so I will give you another option in a moment. But this pack is very nice. It comes with a bunch of animations and particle effects already uh, baked onto these skeletal meshes. Um, so we're going to hit Add to Project. And if you don't see your project here, you just want to search for your project, click Show All Projects, select your project, and then down here, you can select the most recent compatible version, which is probably going to be 4.27 and hit add to project. You'll know this one has added to your project. If you see this folder down here, military web dark. Now, just in case this one isn't free, I'm going to give you another option. And that alternative option is this one here, FPS Weapon Bundle. This one does come with some very nice skeletal meshes, but it does not come with animations or particle effects. So any parts of this tutorial series where we are setting up the animations and the particle effects, uh, you may have to source those from somewhere else. Um, but yeah, this will at least give you some uh, nice skeletal meshes to play around with. So uh, you can add this one to your project. And once again, if your project doesn't come up here, you can search for your project, click show all projects, select your project, which uh, I think is going to be this one, and select the most recent compatible version, which again is probably going to be 4.27 and hit add to project. And you'll know this one has added to your project if you see this FPS weapon bundle folder down here. Now, we're not going to be messing around with those weapon packs too much today, um, but we may just replace the uh, FP weapon here with one of those weapons. Um, but first, let's uh, get our metahuman arms set up for animating. So I'm just going to use uh, this corner over here. I'm just going to delete these cubes. And I'm just going to use this corner over here as my kind of little animation studio. What I'm going to want to do is go into my MetaHumans folder and tray. And here you'll find a folder called either male or female. And if you go into there, male, tall, normal weight, body, you'll find these uh, edited uh, body meshes that we created and the original one which is going to be for me m tall normal weight body if i just carry this click and drag this into the map like so and also go up here and find a camera actor camera actor and drag this in right here it doesn't really matter too much where you place this because we will be parenting the arms to the camera as they are set up in the character's blueprint um, but I'm just going to put this right here like so, and then I'm going to click on these arms and I'm going to click and drag them over here in the outliner onto the camera actor and parent them to the camera actor. And now if we zero out the location here, you'll see this is way out of place right here. But if we just find our first person character, which is in first person and blueprints, BP first person character, head to the viewport here, and these arms and their position relative to the camera is what we're looking for here. So these are parented to the camera and the position here you can see is negative 30, zero and negative 150. Let's just make this an even negative 150 like so. Um, 
Now we might we might change this later on. They are quite far back, um, but for now we're just going to copy this location right here and um, onto onto our one in the world outliner here. So select your M tall normal weight body and change the location to negative thirty and negative one fifty here. And now you'll see that these are in the exact same position as they are in the character's blueprint. So any time that you're doing any animation, you do want to make sure that the position of the arms relative to the camera is correct with regards to how they're set up in your character's blueprint like so. And now what we can do is click up here and add level sequence. And uh, let's... Let's make a folder for these to go into first. So in content, I'm going to right click and create a new folder and call it underscore main. And this just makes sure it comes up right at the top here. And in underscore main, let's make a new folder and call it animations. And then just for now, I'm just going to, you know, put in some placeholders right here in animations. So I can click here, add level sequence, and then in underscore main and animations, I'm just going to leave it called new level sequence. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to get my skeletal mesh right here and drag it into the sequencer like so. You'll see the control rig will pop up here. Uh, I usually like to get rid of this tab right here. But what I might do before I get rid of it is just uh, check, where is it? Only select rig controls right here so that you don't select the world behind it or anything like that. So I'm going to check only select rig controls and then close that animation tab. And the other thing I want to do here is bring up the IK for the hands. So it's under metahuman control rig. We drop this down and drop down uh, global control. And down here you'll see arm L FK IK switch and arm R FK IK switch. You want to check both of those and then you'll see that these boxes have appeared around the wrists of the character right here. So this is the IK of the character, character's hand. So I can now grab this and just move these around and it will move the hands around like so. So I'm just going to make a basic placeholder idle animation that gets the hands up in front of the camera uh, so that when we go on to create our weapon system and we're attaching to the uh, sockets on the hands, uh, we can see that those weapons are attaching. So I'm going to click up here, these three little lines right here, and go to layouts and get this two pane side by side layout like so. And over here where it says top, I'm going to click this one, drop it down and change it to camera actor. That's the camera actor that we dropped in the world right there. And also if it says real time off up here, you want to make sure you click that, change it to real time on. And now if I move those hands in front of the camera, you will see them appear in front of the camera like so. So the arms are indeed really quite far back. Uh, we might change that later on, but for now it really doesn't matter. We are just getting the hands up in front of the camera like so. So the main reason why we might want to move them forward is so that, uh, you know, if we want to have this hand extending further out than like here, uh, we'd be able to do that. You can see it's kind of locking the elbow there as well, and, and it really can't move any, any further forward than that. But for now, this is going to be absolutely fine. So we're just going to grab the hands and move them out in front of the camera like so. And I'm going to align them so that the wrists aren't super kinked. Uh, so this is something that you'll want to pay attention to going forward when creating your own animations, is uh, not to deform the mesh too much uh, wherever you position the hands or the arms. So I'm just going to place them in front of the camera like that. And then I'm going to scroll up in the sequencer here and click this little plus icon on the control rig here. And this will add a keyframe for all of the components of the control rig like so. I'm also going to check this uh, automatic keyframing right here. So click this little key right here. And now whenever you move anything on the control rig, 
it will set a keyframe for whatever time is selected right here on the sequencer. I'm also going to change this to 60 frames per second. And I'm going to make this particular animation 240 frames long. So it's going to be four seconds long. You can move this bar down here to view different scales on the sequencer timeline like so. So now what I'm going to do is just create very basic idle animation. I'm going to go to 60 frames, so one second, and I'm going to grab the IK of each hand and just move it up a little bit and out a little bit. I'm going to grab this one, move it up a little bit and out a little bit. And now you can see it's added that keyframe automatically at 60 frames right there. So that allows you to very quickly pick out where the IK for the left hand and the right hand are, they're right here. And I'm gonna click on these initial frames right here. So the one for the left hand right here, click on that one and then control click the other one to select both of them. Control C to copy, go to 120 frames and control V to paste. And now we've got the hands moving up and out and then back to their original position. And then what I can do is select all four of those keyframes, control C to copy, go to 180 frames like so, control V to paste. And now I've got this really basic idle animation like so. So let's bake this now by scrolling up, right clicking on the root right here and go bake animation sequence. And then right here in our main and animations folder, um, Let's just call this idle sequence. We are probably going to duplicate this level sequence later on, just so that we have uh, this initial keyframing and the automatic keyframing and the frames per second and the IK already set up. We can just duplicate this level sequence now and rename it to whichever one we're creating and then make the necessary changes. So we're going to bake this to the main and animations folder, call it idle sequence and just export to animation sequence. And now if we look in that folder, you'll see this animation sequence, open that up and you'll see that we have our very basic animation sequence with the, the hands moving sort of up and down like so. So let's apply this to our animation blueprint. And there are a few changes that we're going to have to make. Um, I'm actually just going to close sequencer now, and I'm going to change this back to our single pane view like so. Um, and let's find our animation blueprint. So right here, if you have the uh, first person mesh selected, you'll see the animation blueprint that we retargeted and set right here we can browse to that one and open this up and now if i go to the anim graph by double clicking down here i'm going to go into the locomotion state machine and i'm just going to delete all of these and go into my idle right here and whoops did not mean to open that up just going to select this one and change the sequence to the new one that we created which is our idle sequence where'd it go just search for that one idle sequence right here and make sure that you check loop animation like so compile that and you'll see that he has just turned 90 degrees and um this is the problem with the uh, first person animations from the first person project they are rotated 90 degrees so you'll see now that he's facing the wrong way. So what we can do is just select the first person mesh there. And we're just going to change the third argument on the rotation here to negative 90. And he'll be facing the same way as the camera now. Okie doke. So if we go back into our animation blueprint, I'm also going to change this on the armed. Uh, so I'm going to make a few changes here just to basically um, get rid of any uh, sort of chopping and moving of those arms when we pick up the rifle or we fire or anything like that. So I'm going to back out to the state machine here, back out to the anim graph and go into the locomotion rifle state machine. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to delete all of these, go into here and change this one to our idle sequence. 
make sure that loop animation is checked. And one more thing I might do in the anim graph here is delete this, uh, delete this slot and just add a default slot, slot default slot. And this is for our animation montages. Alrighty, if we hit compile and save now and hit play, uh, you'll see we've got our hands up in front of us like so. Very good, but you might notice this texture streaming pool over X megabytes budget. Uh, we are gonna fix that right now by going down to the console command right here and find r streaming r dot streaming dot pool size and then you hit a space and whatever number here i usually just punch in fifteen thousand, and now um, any textures on these hands will will load properly because we have a big enough uh, streaming pool budget um, so that's attaching to the hand like so it's obviously the position is absurd but it doesn't really matter uh, while we're here, actually, we might just change the skeletal mesh on this weapon component um, to be, uh, you know, one of the weapons from the asset pack that we just picked up. Let's make it the pistol. So first person blueprints, BP pickup rifle and BP weapon component. Let's open up BP weapon component. And let's change the skeletal mesh asset right here. Let's change it to a pistol. So I've got this pistols B from the military weapons dark. I'm going to change it to that one. And now when we play and we pick up this rifle, it should just spawn a pistol in our hand like so. Nice. That's all I really wanted to do today, guys. If you wanted to keep yourselves busy and you wanted to start doing some uh, idle animations, some unarmed animations, you could go into the sequencer there and start um, building out the animation blueprint um, with the base locomotion states there for your unarmed states. If you want more information on how to do that in sequencer, I suggest you check out my how to create your own first person animations tutorial um, it's an oldie but a goodie and it will give you sort of more insight into what we'll be doing in sequencer there going forward and creating our animations so yeah that's all i really set out to do today guys thanks for watching um, sorry about the hiatus i have had some life stuff going on as i said but i am back and i will be back with part four very soon before you know it and we will add our replicated weapon system to this project. All right, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.